so welcome everybody i think uh, this is one of the first uh, webinars sessions which we are hosting uh, for the topic being uh, co-working uh, versus covid-19 uh, the the theme of this webinar is to focus on effects of uh, the corona on the current landscape of co-working outfits especially in the context of homegrown enterprise uh, homegrown operators we have wonderful spectrum from national chains like awfis office and oyo uh, to enterprise managed offices uh, workers like uh, scooter to also regional private equity uh, regional players like apl and gohai as well as uh, private equity backed uh, operator like the the hive all these providers except scooter maybe have a blended occupancy of startups indian companies and mncs all these in the, in the backdrop uh, we also have uh, qdes which is a key marketplace of flex so with that i would like just introduce uh, all the panelists we have uh, starting akshita gupta who is the founder and ceo of abl workspace uh, we also have ankit jain who is the founder and uh, joint md of scooter office private limited uh, along with that we have mishu auluwaria founder of go hive uh and we have sameer desai business head of oyo office spaces uh we have sumit lakhani chief marketing officer of office space solutions and lastly we have uh, paras arora who is the founder and uh, ceo of qdes which is the largest market space of for flex solution hi everyone and uh, finally me uh, karan singh sori and i represent jrl uh, as a regional md for uh, the mumbai region Uh, with that, uh, I just want to set the context uh, that uh, we will be having a few questions with the panelists, and at the end of the session, around uh, 11 for 30, 11 40, we will open up the session for uh, taking questions from the audience who are uh, listening to us and watching us. With that, uh, I'll jump into my uh, first question. So, all the panelists, I think uh, I'm happy to. Uh, anybody can raise hand and uh, go in first. Is uh, given that we've entered a recession period. Are we anticipating a change in office space strategy, where more people will move towards no capex, or will they actually look at investing in traditional office spaces? Uh, maybe, uh, yeah, Ankit Jain, if you want to go first. Say hi, guys. Uh, there is a lot of uh, fear amongst all uh, the uh, players and all the industry. What will happen in the future? but a industry which was growing at a percentage of 58% year on year a industry which had a 5% share in the traditional office space which is 633 million and which is growing as as a very very fast paced industry which cannot go wrong on the basics i see a great future the only point is that the growth will be slow but the market opportunity is huge so for example if you see traditionally you have hotels in the uh, you have hotels which are 200 300 400 years old as an industry and after the hospitality industry there came a mall culture which is a 30 to 40 year old culture the there are various recessions there are various downturns there are various epidemic which happened all over the world but the industry has not gone vanished it is like a virus in your computer where you need to reinstall your computer and after your reinstallation the computer works really very well so i think so this is the only time when we are rebooting and reinstalling the computer it might take a one month or one and a half months two months three months to stabilize your computer but trust me when the computer is on and when it is working absolutely fine then your performance and everything will be great so i think so in that view because this industry cannot fail the uh, market cannot collapse it is only a point of time how do we uh, sustain this and the long run yes i completely see the growth growth would be slow but people who have the right basics people who have the right uh, way of working in the industry they will survive a lot great yeah mishu please i think akshata was whoever so <laughs> uh, so in my opinion i think uh, the change that we'll see in fact uh, you know whilst a lot of people have gotten used to working from home now i feel that's going to be challenging uh, uh you know took to continue in a long run except for probably a very small workforce which to, which can manage its work uh, remotely uh what i largely see this as a bigger opportunity for co-working or a flex player uh simply because if i had to run an organization today and if i had to set up an office 
in most cases unless i am a large enterprise i would i think i would be stupid to actually uh, spend money on the capex and uh, you know get into a long term commitment uh, especially considering the fact that there's going to be a lot of dynamism uh, in how the business will grow from here on as well so i think the fact that there's going to be so much of uncertainty in all the businesses in terms of the growth plans for the next 2 to 3 years i doubt there'll be companies which will actually commit for a long term lease and instead they will uh, you know look for flex offices or a co-working as a solution and that's where the opportunity lies post covid for for us so the you had some point yeah hi kal so uh, see office strategy uh, this is ever evolving so we had uh, in in the last decade we had few different parts and then uh it changes uh, it's changed to open uh, set up layout and now we have co-working so uh, this trend it's it's not because of the pandemic right now but we have seen this trend earlier on also that all the major corporates have been moving to co uh, co-working or shared workspaces the reason is simple that they don't want to put in a lot of capex or they want to do a lot of cost cutting so after after pandemic or after the lockdown we'll see there'll be a huge uh, market demand uh, in the co-working sector yes like uh, ankit rightly said that for a couple of months maybe a month or two or three maybe there will be the demand will be a little slower but then once it pick up it will just catch the momentum and everybody would be wanting to shift into co-working spaces in order to cut down their costs sumit lakani if i can i'll take your views given uh, you are a national player i'm sure you interact with a lot of corporates uh, what is the say hi good afternoon everyone uh, great to be here so uh current the way we look at it is uh, there are certain triggers which drive new industries and new trends uh, around and uh, the current situation is a very very big trigger uh the rise of co-working can be uh, if i may say it can be attributed to global financial crisis in 2008 if you see uh, the way us behaved after 2008 the larger corporates they started moving in with a perspective that a percentage of their workforce needs to work out of a flexible uh, workspace offerings and that also marked a rise of you know uh, co-working across the globe uh, so it was 2008 uh, i would say that 2020 would be uh, a kind of a uh, interesting uh, moment for co-working players while the next uh, i'm i would say next two quarters would be quite tough for everyone um i mean everyone has to be very very smart uh, and you know survive in kind of a mode but uh, post that it's going to be a a great v shaped recovery this is the similar kind of recovery which we saw in uh, the commercial real estate sector in um, post uh, 2008 crisis where the total absorption uh, fell down from about 32 million square feet to 23 million square feet and it went back to almost about 32 million square feet in the next uh, subsequent year of uh, 2010 so that's how uh, we are uh, viewing uh, this whole uh, scenario uh paras you are in the epicenter of uh, co-working operators as well as uh, corporates who use the platform uh, to actually reach out and get uh, co-working spaces how what's your view we interested to hear that uh thanks uh, first of all uh, you know really love the spirit of all the panelists thanks karan for moderating that it's a brilliant question to start with uh i think uh, you know it's the turning point in our lives uh, anyone who's related with co-working or a flex industry i think the golden era uh, very harsh for me or bold for me to say that uh, keeping whatever is happening at a global level uh, with this pandemic but historically what sumit also said historically whenever recession or a downturn happens uh, people who gain are the serviced offices and flex offices uh, but that's historically nothing much can be done about the lockdown i mean we just hope and pray to god that we are out of this pandemic asap as soon as possible but uh, if we apply simple uh, you know sense common sense uh, it's not that we all are part of co working so we got to be loud about when the world economy is wounded people and sectors would take time to recover what they would need while recovering is agility flexibility and an absolute business based cost uh, around the whole sector and co working is on demand workspace it saves on the capex you uh, you get ready to move in managed offices so i see two strong shifts uh, which which is going to happen uh, companies which had larger outfit they will move to a smaller outfit that again is a blessing for flex if they've been 
they have a high cost of occupancy of their real estate they will shift to a you know much more strategic cost so in all the aspects uh, if you see uh, the time for flex is going to be great most of the panelists said that uh 2020 uh, first half according to me is going to be slow its recovery but one sector which is going to end of the day gain out of the whole thing would be co working flex so i think second half of the year financial year it's going to be everyone is going to be very very busy in this sector interesting views pal uh thanks for that so before i move on to my next question i just uh, i mean for the audience uh, please bear with us uh, do keep in mind it's is work from home and we are doing this uh, webinar So some interruptions. This is first time for me personally. Uh, so any mistakes, please ignore. Thank you. <laughs> so moving to the second question is work from home. Is it a successful experiment or a threat to global uh, office space and uh, co-working sector? Uh, maybe I can come to. Uh, take that. Let me show if you want to take that. If I yeah. repeat the question again, uh, work from home. Is it a successful experiment? or a threat to office space and co working see so um, uh, to answer your question current i think uh, uh, you know i've worked in the financial services space right and uh, you know in the 1990s as well as 2000 uh, you had this whole movement which was around branch banking is dead and you know everybody said that uh, with uh, internet coming in uh what is going to happen is that uh, all the transactions you will actually be in a position to do with the click of uh, uh, a button on your computer and that's going to take away the branches frankly if you look at uh, the indian banking industry we added around 67000 odd branches in the last decade uh, which amounts to a 30% odd addition uh, and the branches still remain Uh, however if you look at it what has changed is the role of the branch right right uh, earlier you know you had customers who used to visit a branch to do a cash deposit cash withdrawal but today customers are visiting branches for advisory services and for more complex transactions like home loans insurance where you would want to talk to a person before you uh, make a decision on the product that you want to buy um you know having said and done that um, i believe that you know people are going to rethink on the norms for the workspace so you know one of the norms that you will see in a workspace is if i have 100 people in my uh, head of red seats worth of space uh, that's maybe something that people will try and challenge and maybe you know they may look at uh, staffing at much lower levels because at any point in time you do have people who are traveling around right and before is it necessary for a person to be mapped to a single seat i don't think so that's one right uh, i think the second aspect to look at, uh, look at is uh, you know frankly work from home is challenging you look at uh, you know uh, personally you know we've been on zoom calls over the last uh, two weeks working with our teams and uh, what you will see is uh, home internet uh, home challenges are making it tough to work from home and therefore i believe the workspace is not going to go away the workspace is going to remain but how companies think about you know staffing the workspace how large a workspace they take and what's the purpose that they are going to use it for might change got it ankit uh, sandhari you want to come in here yeah Ankit's sure <laughs> so yeah hi good afternoon everyone uh, this is of course a uh, very challenging and interesting time also for the uh, whole industry uh, while this is a forced experiment at a global scale uh, which we are eagerly awaiting to see how companies uh, reflect back on this particular experiment and uh, decide on the future course of their real estate strategy Uh, i have a couple of views on this topic i still believe that offices are an essential part of human behavior or to get any kind of work done i don't think companies will move away significant part of their work workforce to work from home uh, majority of the people will continue to work from home but the role of office will change uh, it will be the and, and then that would also reflect in the designs of offices that we all evolve and do in the future which would be even more centered around activity based working where there will be i think if co-working has been known to provide a larger percentage of the area for collaboration spaces i think right. an effect of this pandemic would be 
the designs of the future flex spaces or co-working spaces will have more focused activity zones more focused collaboration zones so that people will actually want to come to office so that they can work in a structured setting where they can sort of come together brainstorm take decisions which is otherwise very very difficult to do uh, working from home so i think that will be one major sort of impact on the industry which will reflect in the designs of the future flex spaces and and co-working spaces overall demand for uh, workspaces will continue to grow uh, and we have been seeing the trend towards flexibility has been rising and this pandemic is only going to accelerate that shift towards flex spaces and co-working spaces got it any other panelists who wants to take this yeah. uh, view yeah akshita please go ahead. so karan uh, work from home is actually quite challenging uh, a in an industry in india we don't have homes designed in a way wherein people can completely work from home we don't have that kind of infrastructure at home so we don't have a separate area not everybody has a separate area where they can start you know working from home 70% of my client who sits at evil work spaces they use lease line to give to get lease lines at home will be really challenging and be exorbitant also so uh, i this work from home thing it's very nice you can do it in you know once a week or maybe twice a week but going for a longer period no it it, it cannot be i mean i've seen it personally myself i've been on zoom calls with my uh, with my team i mean daily my pro- right. productivity productivity has gone down to 40 to 50% i mean it's not happening so even if you know uh, do it yeah so i think it, yeah sorry yeah yeah okay point. Point. Yeah, to me so uh, uh, there is a recent uh, survey done by one of the biggest banks in america which have a very big office in uh, gurgaon so they have a very big portfolio so 70 to 80% of the productivity went up in work from home as compared to the normal traditional offices and uh, because of this sudden exposure of the virus everyone is trying to explore different ways so if you see facebook has announced 1000 dollars ev- to every person to just upgrade their equipments at home to work from home because the situation of this virus right now is very bad but what what can you do it's like a flu it can come after 6 months so all the right. companies are well prepared to gauge this kind of an activity where the lockdown can be there for more than one month or two months because every time if you see since history when the sars or mars was there the virus has been more proactive and more deadly so that means the next time it comes it will be more deadly so all the companies have to try this as a methodology so that their bcp and the business continuity planning is absolutely in tandem so uh, there are few uh, bottlenecks that you don't have an equipment you don't have the it technology but through vpn and through other sources you can definitely work from home and the work is happening so if you see all the governments if you see all the offices and everyone is working from home there are challenges so companies will come they will definitely come with the ideas uh, this is a bold statement which i am making but uh, i can see because there is a vision of co working which happened after that there came a serviced office play then there is a traditional shift which will happen towards uh, we can deny it completely but Uh, everyone knows that work from home is working and people are working from there there are technological issues which can be solved there are other issues which can be solved but yeah the productivity is little uh, a challenge but things will be overcome and lot of traditional shift from a traditional office will happen into a, a work from home into a co-working and into a serviced office domain so that that shift will change from the traditional office spaces I this think one of the important aspects that I just want to add, uh, you know, apart from the points which have already been mentioned, is about the mental health of employees or workers, for that matter. Now, work from home. Yes, we have all been forced upon to work from home currently, uh, but we are yet to see the ill effects of it. Um, you know, most of us have actually been locked down. It's not really that we have seen the most productive side of ours in the last two weeks while we are working. It's more of a makeshift arrangement or a or a quick fix that we are we we don't have an option to do, but i'm sure if you ask probably you know if you do a survey of 10000 employees uh, about 99500 would want to go back to an office as soon as the lockdown opens irrespective yeah. of the fact whether they love their jobs or no yeah. so, and current to add on to this i think uh, you know you look at the base product we had in coworking right which is a hot seat which right. was essentially used by freelancers uh you, you speak to most of these freelancers what they said is you know frankly the reason why i am willing to pay for the seat is because it just gives me peace of mind 
uh, it's easy to switch on and off between work and home. Got it. So yeah. interesting, uh, Karan, uh, Samir, you mentioned. Uh, I have a sorry. point over here. Uh, right. And you know, as a company, we have taken a a, a very uh, important track over here. So we always had been a strong proponent of work near home. Uh, kind of a, a perspective. We thought the work from home uh, will not uh, work because for the points which Akshita, you know, very clearly mentioned around. Second point, uh, specifically with respect to India, was that employers, especially the Indian corporates, were not very comfortable with their employees working from home. So there was a kind of a trust gap with the employee working from home. Now that's a very, very you know, tectonic kind of a shift which is going to happen. Indian employers are getting more comfortable with their employees and getting more trust. Earlier, the work from home programs were always being situated with larger companies. Now, this is a very interesting step where Indian corporates will start incorporating work from home uh, steps because right. people have realized this will work while there are challenges around tech and all, but they're very simple challenges to overcome around. The second important aspect, the impact, the way we see it for co-working players like us. We think Importantly, people will start believing that remote working is a very, very big possibility. Now, do we really need very large head offices or can we have, so let's say a company has a very large head office in Gurgaon. Can they have few satellite offices in Noida and Delhi as well and a few, uh, you know, a, a, a mid-sized office in Gurgaon? So that it will start paving a way towards remote working because people will become more confident that their employees are productive more on the remote working side. The impact it has on co-working players like us is we would prefer to have a much larger network of centers than having very large center in a single kind of a location. Second, as a player, we would also look at providing, I mean, we have already tied up with, uh, you know, Vodafone um, and providing work from home hits to our, our customers as well. So you will see co-working players taking a lead and facilitating and enabling work from home kits for their respective clients. Very interesting. Uh, so audience, if you note, uh, this question actually uh, got uh, two different uh, views. So Akshita, who mentioned that about 50% uh, property loss and uh, on the other side, Ankit Jain and uh, Sumir, I think somewhere trending that work from home is a norm which will stay uh, and companies will adjust uh, in the near future. Very interesting. So uh, just going to the next to, sorry, sorry, go ahead. just wanted to add, I mean, I recently had an interaction with a very large enterprise uh, on the same subject and we being a transaction tech company, uh, we have noticed that, you know, uh, there are certain teams, especially in the tech and product, uh, they can still work in uh, work from home setting, but even, right. you know, feedback from them is uh, that, yeah, it can happen like two, three days, but they need to go out. We are a social animal. We need that exposure uh, of, of meeting and greeting people. Secondly, uh, stay away taking clue from summit. Uh, you know, these mega enterprises, they have started thinking on flex side. Uh, they, these large headquarters, 100,000 square feet will become like a 50,000 square feet. So the CEO office or the strategic leadership team, accounts and finance, data sensitive stuff would be in the uh, strategic corporate office. And rest, what they're experimenting is to have multiple flex, which by default would be a BCP and also work near home kind of a concept. So I think the traditional large outfits uh, will become a strategic corporate office where data sensitivity and key functions are required and a lot of projects and timelines. And I, as they say, as per the business plan, uh, agility and flexibility would be taken care of by the flex office. Lastly, I just wanted to mention that, you know, the potential exposure to the head office, these enterprises started thinking on that. So they are thinking of removing the third party activities which are recruitment drives, trainings to uh, outside the office, uh, outside the head office, which is in the flex or hotels and all that. Very interesting, Paras. So thanks. I think your point actually was leading to my next question was about uh, do the panelists believe uh, moving forward once the lockdown is over and uh, business normalcy can is established back, uh, will corporates actually start thinking of de-densifying, especially large corporates who have a, a larger workforce, uh, de-densifying their office portfolio and look at alternate solutions like a work from home or remote working or maybe even co-working. I think if Paras, obviously you made your point, but I would like to hear some other panelists as well. Uh, anybody wants to go? Yeah, I mean, I have my hand up. 
Oh, sorry. My, I'm just jumping multiple screens. Sorry, sorry. Go that's ahead, okay. That's okay. That's okay. No problem. Yeah. So sorry, uh, sure. I think this was always warranted for, uh, you know, uh, like Sumit also mentioned that the focus now will be looking at slightly smaller centers at, at more locations vis-a-vis, let's say, just a, a large center. Uh, when we started Go Hive, our idea was also to have, uh, you know, a center across every micro market location in a, within a city. Uh, what companies will start to realize now, and, and probably it's most forced upon because of a pandemic, uh, is that they would want to actually care about the fact that they want to position their employees closer to where they stay. And okay. I think that's where the demand uh, will, will actually be spread across uh, many more centers vis-a-vis just larger centers or their large offices. Interesting. Yeah, yeah, good job. So my view is that uh, uh, the only situation till the time we don't have a vaccine things will be a little weird. So till the time of six months or nine months or one year, people people will think about less densifying. But after when the vaccine is there, because it's the same thing, you don't meet other people. So how can you be uh, sure that you will not meet other people or you can't socialize? So it's the same thing. Once that vaccine is there, you have an antidote in your body, then you will have the same kind of logic where a company wants to densify, wants to cut costs because uh, because it doesn't matter if it is a six feet away distance. It doesn't matter if it is a 10 feet away distance. So if someone is infected, the other person gets infected. The mo- most important point is the companies will come on the cost parameters. They have to densify it. They have to think logical. They have to be practical. There Today we are talking about all this. But tomorrow when their vaccine is there, you will socialize. You will go to party. You will go to pubs. You will you'll densify. You will make all the, all the same kind of presumptions what we are doing in the business. This is my view. So I think if I get the question correctly, and probably Ankit, maybe I got it wrong. I think when he, when Karan mentioned uh, about de- de-densifying their offices, I think it was more about, I mean, to my uh, understanding, food, it was more about reduction. absolutely reduction footprint of, reduction, yes, but yeah, not yes. ensuring, yeah, but still ensuring that of course you would need, you would cut, want to cut cost and you would want to make sure that people are working out of office, physical office space. <laughs> In a lot of cases, current what uh, we have seen is uh, most corporates have started uh, rostering right of employees, and you will see uh, alternate day working models. You will see alternate week teams coming in. Um, so that's pretty much the solution that we see customers implementing uh, currently. Right? I mean, uh, look at the WHO recommended distance between two people. That's six feet, right? Yeah. Uh, how many office spaces have you seen which have a desk size of six feet? You haven't, right? Uh, uh, at least I haven't, right? Now, uh, therefore, you know, what you are likely to see is uh, more likely where customers will break down their work spo- or workforce across multiple properties uh, and even in a workspace uh, work with a rostering model. Uh, and, you know, one of the things that we always crib about often is that we create uh, beautiful common areas in our workspaces, which most clients don't use. Uh, I see usage of that going up, uh, you know, given this scenario. Interesting. Any, anybody else has any point of view? Yeah, I think uh, a couple of my co-panelists talked about uh, uh, people having uh, go, people having to go to offices in multiple micro markets to enable right. remote working and uh, and they want to have presence in different micro markets. I think this forced experiment has taken away the whole concept of location. Right? The real estate projects have so far been valued only on three parameters, location, location, and location. And I think this experiment will make people rethink about the role of location. I'm not saying that location is going to completely go away from the perspective of asset valuations or the future of workspaces or however we are defining this. But people will start weighing down the location over the next in the mid to long term. Uh, when you think of uh, a similar industry, which is hotel, right? The hotels are valued based on the on the quality of the operator who is operating the building, not as much as uh, the location in which the hotel is situated in. So I think as as long as uh, the co-working players or the flex operators are able to create a product which is integrating lifestyle services, additional member services, like how we have been doing at the Hive uh, in terms of providing a fully integrated lifestyle ecosystem. I think that that kind of concept will gain more traction uh, because the whole concept of location has now been taken away. Got it. Anybody else or can I move to my next question? So uh, I just uh, yeah, wanted to say 
uh, pretty much I kind of uh, answered uh, while answering the previous right. question. Uh, yes, uh, there. I think there is going to be a while the recovery period is on. Uh, you'll see strong uh, indications from the corporate real estate heads to uh, you know reduce the size. Uh, renewals would be very strategic in nature. There could be a lot of uh, renegotiations uh, in the recovery phase. And in the recovery phase, if they happen to experiment with flex, uh, then it will become like the both the formats would coexist after 12 to 18 months, where they'll have a strategic corporate office as well as a lot of functions moving to a remote and work near home kind of a concept. Uh, also reducing the environmental pressure, uh, which we all are witnessing that how it's blossoming when the humans are inside. So if you know, so so a lot of people have an environmental angle also now, where they will work near home. No, but not at home. Uh, productivity right. cannot be measured at home. Cannot be right. monitored. I also see one more thing, Karan and Paras. The, the quality of the assets and the way employee safety health is being taken care in that quality of the asset will play a very, very drastic role. So, for example, if you see scooter offices are in the top grade A assets and we always operate in grade A buildings only, which have a very, very significant role in the employee safety assets. So, there, the uh, chances of recovery and other monitoring aspects are pretty, pretty high. And there, the controlling systems and everything is excellent. So this will play a lot of role in strategic decisions towards the corporate will shift. When it's a small company or an SME or an enterprise, they will try and relocate into the buildings which are grade A, super assets. Got it. So actually, moving to my next question. Uh, so we all know we have right now uh, uh, an unknown enemy, uh, COVID-19. You don't have a face to it. Uh, it's a global threat. I mean, it's proven every country, uh, literally in the world, is impacted uh, to a large extent. And uh, currently, given that there's no vaccine as such for the cure, the only uh, solution or a preventive measure which is there uh, currently being practiced across is social distancing. Uh, social distancing, and you already touched upon it. Given social distancing, and uh, how do you think uh, once the lockdown is over, with this fear at the backdrop, how would co-working be uh, viewed? Given co-working has more collab areas, more hot desks, uh, and the whole, whole point of social distancing and this is two contractory angles. So I just want to get some views on that. Uh, so Karan, I would take a stab at it first. I mean, the way we are uh, working over the last seven to 10 days, the major focus and uh, the major efforts are being made, uh, how to make our centers ready uh, uh, post lockdown scenario. Okay. So the kind of steps we are taking probably will also become a benchmark for a lot of other commercial real estate buildings. And um, so we'll, we'll be leading it from the front in terms of taking all the precautions, the hygiene, the, you know, the safety um, uh, aspects around on it. I'll also give you an example of why I said, you know, we'll be leading it from the front. We are already in work uh, of creating an app, uh, which enables, uh, takes a kind of a health score for of all, of, uh, all our, you know, our community members. It will factor in uh, the travel history, the, the temperature of the individual, uh, you know, and few other uh, aspects. That information will be shared with the company, with us, and then the entry will be granted to uh, that individual within the center. Then uh, a, a kind of a particular mask, someone is not, you know, allowed to enter. We are going to provide all those masks to our community members. Uh, the number of time the cleaning is going to be done in a center, it's going to be, you know, uh, almost about uh, 2x times more uh, than it's uh, going to be uh, other ways around. So there are almost about 7 to 8 uh, kind of steps. These steps, we've also taken feedback from a lot of our, you know, member companies. They're complete. It's, a, it's on a similar kind of a model, very simple, that every person is being graded into three categories of health, uh, red, amber, green. Anyone who is green can enter the facility. Anyone who is not amber and red is asked to, uh, you know, uh, come a, a bit later till the point that uh, don't come around on green. So all these steps which we are taking uh, will become a kind of a benchmark. The intent is no one can, uh, and you know, intend to be in a situation where uh, you have someone who even is showing any kind of symptoms to be working in a, in a kind of a center. So in, in a nutshell, the intent is that the occupiers and the clients feel extremely comfortable and confident working in a co-working, uh, uh, you know, working in our centers. And that's how, uh, you know, uh, uh, we are uh, trying 24 uh, seven to uh, make those kind of uh, arrangements. In, I would stick my neck out and say that uh, probably the arrangements which a co-working operators will end up making because we are more agile, we are new age, we have been more receptive to technologies as compared compared to 
conventional developers and building management companies so uh, we will be able to provide much more uh, safer uh, uh, centers to uh, our occupiers so very interesting very heartening to hear uh, sumit about this app and uh, which will model the hill parameters uh, ankit uh, jain any views from your perspective yeah so uh, what i feel is that uh, this uh, today uh, this complete market has uh, devastated the uh, the feelings of the opportunities which people had in the mind on the growth projections but uh, the situation currently is to uh, walk like a tortoise when you have your hands and legs outside your shell you just keep it inside and when there is a storm then your shell protects it and once you again start walking then you walk slowly and steadily and uh, counter this problem so this is my view on this hi karan yeah akshita hi so uh, sumit really uh, mentions no sorry uh, yeah sumit yeah sumit sumit no the the other guy i just sumit only sorry sumit 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 he no worries he mentions like really interesting measures for the co-working industry however i think um, see what difference does it make uh, let's say uh, there, there, there's a there's a company of uh, of 50 people of there's a manufacturer of uh, workforce of 50 people uh, in a company and uh, uh, they are using a co-working space and one company is using the uh, traditional offices but the idea is they're coming from uh, different parts of the city they're taking different mode of transport right. they are uh, coming to a collective uh, place to work so the social distancing uh, i i don't think so it will affect the co-working uh, industry because uh, ultimately they they're coming together and everybody is coming from different places but yes like how sumit mentioned that we this would become a mandate as to sanitize the space as to use all these measures what he has mentioned and this will be taken up by the co-working industry only traditional right. offices will find it very difficult to take these measures so uh, i think uh, it's a there's, there's not much difference uh, if the person is going in the traditional office or in going to uh, going to a co-working space interesting so the, the, point the risk factor remains the same actually in both the cases and i think just building upon on what uh, sumit mentioned uh, i think the co-working places will definitely be under more pressure both in terms of expectations from the clients as well as the preventive measures that they'll be able to take uh, in ensuring that these spaces are much safer vis-a-vis -vis a traditional office as and when the lockdown opens interesting so yeah. uh, sorry go ahead hi i i second what uh, all three have said and you know essentially if you look at how the co-working industry took off and what was the appeal for clients to move from traditional office spaces to co-working i think one of the first uh, things other than uh, cost and flex office space was also the fact that you know taking care of hygiene in the workspace you have higher standards than i have seen in our traditional workspace right uh, so which is one of the first reasons why they came in and we would like to maintain that differentiator going forward i think mean, the last 2 uh, 3 weeks have actually given us a lot of learnings in terms of how we would like to manage the workspace going forward so just implementing all of that we'll be far in a far better position to manage this interesting so uh, um, next question to the panel any any specific uh, views anybody has on uh, given that now sanitization and uh, the overall upkeep of the centers uh, is the new thing and i mean it's here to stay and i think will become one of the key features uh, anybody evaluates for uh, Co-working uh, center. Any views on that? Yeah, Paras, go ahead. Don't think that. Yeah, hi, Karan. Uh, it's it was very encouraging uh, when Sumit and Akshat and everyone mentioning. I mean, to me, uh, the vulnerability question, whether it's your own office or co-working, it's pretty much the same because people are coming from different uh, areas of the city and uh, what has been their previous uh, exposure. True. So True. there is no. It's not. It's not that co-working space is going to be at more risk. Uh, but one thing is there in the decision making process like which also sumit uh, and and you know samir mentioned that uh, that location pricing look and feel the three pyramids of decision making for a co working space uh, it's in my budget it's in that location it looks pretty good i think the four it's going to be square now the fourth uh, point is going to be how well it is maintained how hygienic it is i think hygiene levels uh, would be at par with look and feel of the space uh this calls for some kind of a certification 
uh, if there is any body who can set, uh, certify a particular space that yeah it is good to go uh, it is uh, you know we have uh, ehs compliance for large enterprise employee and health and safety that leads to more of you know fire exit and all that stuff but overall hygiene levels uh, what kind of consumables to use if there could be a sops around that it will become a very important uh, decision making process for clients interesting anybody else has any view on the hygiene and uh, sanitization point Just one more to the next question. Uh, what is the view of the panel uh, with respect to corporates uh, once the lockdown is over, uh, looking at uh, co-working as a solution for uh, BCP uh, as well as third-party activities? And uh, Paras did mention uh, his view on where he believes that third-party activities, uh, when I say third-party activities like recruitment drives or some trainings and modules, will they move to co-working uh, from a? Will that be the new norm? Uh, let me just take that. So, see, as far as uh, BCP is concerned, uh, there is going to be a clear trend and move towards co-working spaces. I do see that, uh, you know, because people, in fact, you know, before the lockdown was initiated, I'm sure many players had discussions which were ongoing with clients around BCP requirements, right? Uh, so, BCP, I see that as a clear trend, uh, specifically around recruitment drives. Uh, not too sure. Maybe they may just continue with uh, Zoom calls uh, for recruitment, or they may choose to use co-working spaces or hotel spaces. Yeah. So, uh, with respect to the business continuity planning, uh, while uh, co-working spaces, at least you know, we have participated in a couple of uh, larger RFPs already, supporting a couple of you know larger MNCs with respect to the uh, business continuity planning. Uh, I, I genuinely you know, uh, echo with Samir that this whole segment uh, will uh, largely be taken by uh, co-working players. Second, uh, one of the reasons why it will also be taken care of uh, by, uh, I mean, uh, by co-working players is the kind of cost efficiency which uh, larger corporates are looking for uh, BCP planning and the kind of you know, flexibility which they require and uh, there are other uh, aspects around on it. I think we are a bit more, uh, you know, better suited to provide that. Second, in all honesty, over the next three to six months, almost a lot of operators, including, I mean, I would not shy saying us as well, will be uh, looking at, uh, will be having decent level of vacancies in our centers. Over the last four or five years, uh, none of the operator has genuinely struggled with any occupancy kind of a problem. So that's the elephant in the room, right? Uh, and I'm, uh, you know, there is no denying the fact that next three months or six months are going to be a bit so we would also actively participate with larger corporates in terms of meeting their BCP need. We will also be more flexible with our quotes for these BCP uh, for meeting these BCP needs as we had been, you know, uh, uh, you know, as against what we were, would have been, you know, a bit earlier. So uh, I think we will be uh, surely going around on uh, that. With respect to the third party aspect. Uh, Recruitment drives have been happening, but that's a very small segment of the uh, market. Uh, we are still not able to figure out some new use cases. Maybe, you know, uh, others may have some uh, view around on other use, uh, use cases, which may emerge where people start using co-working spaces as, uh, you know, a place to hold those kind of events or, or engagements uh, around. But uh, Beyond recruitment, shootings, and you know uh, some kind of uh, uh, larger corporate events, uh, gatherings, uh, there are very few use, use cases which we can think of. I second the thoughts of uh, uh, people who have spoken before me. I think, uh, of course, BCP uh, has emerged and will continue to emerge as a as a new category of uh, customers that seek spaces in uh, co-working spaces. And I think this is also a larger shift that we are seeing. Uh, and many of my co-panelists will agree with that, that many of the requirements previously were companies looking to consolidate their spaces uh, into multiple branches in a city to taking a larger office in one place. Now that whole shift is somewhat going back where companies are realizing uh, with this pandemic that the, all of their BCP plants have gone for a toss. They need to have a fresh think over it. How do they maximize the productivity by bringing people together at the same time, minimize the risk by having people 
distributed in across multiple location so that's an interesting dynamic which will play out over the next few months different companies will uh address this differently but overall uh, the sentiment and the demand for co-working spaces uh, will increase in my opinion well so uh, parents i just interrupt here uh, we have i think just two minutes before you open up the uh, the panel uh, for get, taking pub, uh, the audience questions so i'll just take the quick last question uh, i think uh, very important uh, given uh, this lockdown uh, will have has the impact on the economy uh, once this is over how do you see the fundraise issue or challenges do you perceive any challenges in fundraise from a mid short to mid term perspective for co working operators uh, when i question about uh, fundraise it's more related to expansions so current uh, with respect to the yes, overall sir. investment yes, highway uh, what we see is and you know when we discuss with uh, multiple private equity players the vc players uh, within the industry um, it's a it's a major major adverse impact for across all the industries okay. currently there are very very few contra industries uh, maybe in the ed tech space and you know online gaming space there are very few contra industries which are uh, having a kind of a interesting times now with this this to a vc and t the kind of opportunities they have the kind of uh, uh, investments they were looking at they are available at a much much better price for them so uh, there is a very limited pool of capital which will chase very high quality kind of transactions the valuations are going to get impacted uh, so over the next 6 to uh, i would say this trend will continue over the next 2 to 3 quarters uh, this had always been a kind of a trend it's not even uh, this covid 19 situation is a black swan kind of a event whereas gfc was still a manageable kind of a, a, a situation so over the next 2 to 3 quarters uh, the funding privately uh, primarily the private investment funding it's going to be um, very tight it's going to uh, go after very high quality assets uh, the valuations are going to be uh, uh, you know a bit uh, on a lower side so uh, but what companies will start doing is they will start looking at you know lot of alternate uh, you know modes of capital a uh, lot of structured debt kind of uh, transaction and structured equity kind of transactions will start uh, uh, happening around and uh, people will uh, come up with more kind of you know financial engineering kind of products to uh, uh, fund their uh, 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 you know uh, kind of uh, businesses let's say in a co-working kind of business uh, if a lot of people have uh, enterprise level clients maybe people will start going into invoice discounting of those uh, larger enterprise uh, level clients creating a pool around on, on those kind of aspect so innovation will take over uh, but uh, the investment climate if you say uh, will there be a lot of uh, funds chasing uh, co working sector it's going to be a kind of a tough scenario second please uh, let's all be uh, honest about one aspect our sector lost some level of its flavor post the we work global fiasco for among the you know investor community so we were we just recovered from creating confidence back into the investor mind post uh, that fiasco and this is a kind of a new challenge which we are uh, facing so i think i would and that's how probably you know everyone is thinking everyone is being a bit more innovative around how to raise more capital expansions um, over the next uh, 60 to 90 days uh, there will be a kind of a wait and watch approach uh, i mean the kind of aggressive uh, uh, way everyone was going around in terms of signing up new uh, uh, sites i think it will it's 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 a kind of obvious kind of scenario uh, but uh, in terms of growth we will continue to you know uh, keep chasing growth in a much more measured kind of a way correct yeah i think yeah, just okay. uh, sorry i have a view here to share so for example what uh, sumit has said i second the thought what sumit has said uh, the financial industry right now ha- is seeing that the uh, the the complete uh, co-working or the co uh living or whatever which is related to sharing of spaces was a game of snakes and ladders where you had more snakes than ladders so now they have realized it that now it is a game of ludo how patiently you play how patiently you make your uh, tick go inside the home uh, uh, uh button so that's more important so people who have played it patiently and have got the right set of clients and right set of buildings still there are very huge opportunities because i see a v shape recovery and there is a lot of 633 million is the traditional market where a lot of percentage will shift to flexi and co-working 
trust me uh, this is the this is this these are the 6 months to 9 months if we survive the 6 to 9 months the the game plan is completely different if we choose the right asset and choose the right clients because the clients are always looking for a flexibility in leases right now no landlord will be comfortable because they will also be uh, discounting their lrds onto the client who's more stable so they will find out a player who's more stable in the sense of living up to their expectation for a longer duration of time so my sense is that right. so, so i'll just uh, yeah khita go Okay, so I believe fundraise would be a challenge for all the industries, not just uh, co-working, as there's a global slowdown. But yes, uh, it's a temporary phase. Everything will be back to normal once the economy is back on its feet. As far as growth is concerned, uh, we are not stopping anywhere. So uh, we are launching our next center within the first week of the lockdown, uh, getting uh, getting over and uh, adding forty percent of the existing capacity in the next quarter. So yeah. So I just so want to just add one point to uh, the funding scenario. I think uh, uh, yes, of course, as uh, Akshita mentioned, uh, the funding is going to be tough for almost all the sectors now. But I think as far as co-working is concerned, people will start looking at more EBIT, EBITDA level as well, uh, vis-a-vis just basing the valuations on the revenue which was happening till about let's say about a year back. So I think that's where the co-working players will have to become more realistic uh, and also more sustainable as a business, vis-a-vis just proposing uh, seats at a discounted price. Okay, so I'll just take one comment uh, and Ankit Sundar here. Uh, given you, your, the the group which you represent is overall a, a basically a, a, a private equity fund. Uh, so, what's the now? What's your personal view on this fundraise? I think uh, uh, globally, uh, it has affected the uh, company's growth plans and uh, fundraising plans. Uh, but if I put my investor hat on, uh, these are the times to be investing in businesses. Uh, you typically want to buy low, sell high. So I would see there will be opportunities uh, coming out of this crisis. Uh, there will be operators who have been focused on building a solid, profitable business uh, with high quality clientele and high quality uh, businesses will come out stronger from this, and they will continue to grab a larger share of the the funding that's available. Got it. So great! Thanks a lot, panel. So I think uh, I I see on this uh, dashboard we have some fifty questions. Uh, so maybe I'll just quickly look through it. Uh, so a question from uh, Rajiv Bhatla: uh, What discounts are co-working organization providing during the lockdown, and what is the stand being taken on rent free or any support to startups? Uh, Paras, if you want to answer that. I'll I'll take the elephant in the room on behalf of everyone rather than putting any provider in spot. Uh, uh, you know what? Uh, you know we've been experiencing this. There has been request uh, for waiver slash discount, and uh, it's too early to comment on that because well, because March was fine. Uh, it is very difficult to comment now that how exactly what standardized policy everyone is going to take. Uh, uh, providers have been uh, very. Uh, you know considerate on the request but it's very difficult to comment on point a point b kind of a strategy but uh, some innovative steps have been taken where you know uh, there is a sense of spirit uh, which has been spreading across us and everyone in the ecosystem to keep the business as usual uh, support every, because it's a circle i mean it's goes uh, uh, in a vicious circle that once stops then you know the whole chain will get uh, broken so it's request to the entire client segment to keep the business as usual uh, and too early to comment it's more of a you know the panic request i think uh, if we are able to partially remove lockdown after uh, 15th april it's not going to be a much of an issue uh, but yes uh, the request are coming some providers are uh, giving uh, you know discounting some providers are uh, uh, requesting in terms of extending the overall tenure and giving that period as a rent free so for example 12 month tenure will become 13 month tenure uh, for the client got it so uh, next question uh, is uh, what are the change in business model now adopted by coworking players to retain corporates anybody wants to take that I think fundamentally we're just sticking to our business model and hoping that corporates will come because flex makes sense now. Yes, so fundamentally there is no change in the business model. It's just that uh, we are upping our offering in terms of safety, hygiene around, so that people are more confident and comfortable coming to our centers. Got it. 
going go on. So we have a question from uh, Sukhmani, founder of All Space from Chennai. Uh, people like us. Sorry, I'm just scrolling through the screen. People like us who serve SMEs and also the incubators would suffer due to this pandemic situation. Those who are startup entrepreneurs, they would probably see this as cost cutting factor. So how do we handle any ideas on this? So I, I would say I would take this question. Uh, so I would say we'll see some kind of a, you know, uh, uh, a delay in, in, in the renewing of the membership for the next couple of months. But I think if we can weather the storm for the next, uh, you know, month, month and a half, uh, hopefully if the lockdown opens as we expect it to open, uh, I don't see that as a challenge. As Paris rightly said, it's more of a preventive and a reactive measure that most of the occupants are taking right now, wherein they're coming up with such requests to either cancel or pause their membership. Uh, if it's business as usual for each one of us, I think the, the, the business will continue even for the co-working spaces. Got it. Another question is, uh, can we continue to invoice our clients on monthly contract during lockdown? How do we deal with revenue losses if not? Um, I think again, your uh, most standard answer, and I think Paras had already taken this question. Um, most important, I think, uh, you know, perspective to think about is that there are three parties. There's a co-working player, there's a landlord, and there's a client. And, you know, we as co-working players don't want to get into, you know, are most concerned about client retention, right? Uh, having said and done that, if it works for all three parties, then it's a win-win. And it's really about, you know, as clients working, sitting down with your client, with your landlord and working out individual solutions is frankly no standard answer on how to deal with it. All right. Uh, the next question are we seeing builders offering rent waivers? Then how come co-working companies are tackling waivers request? And sorry, a lot of questions from audience on these rent waivers. Yeah, I think uh, we're yet to see what the builders are offering. I think uh, in some of the cases, as I, as uh, as uh, Samir also mentioned, whether it's on the landlord side or on the customer side, it's going to be handled on a case to case basis as far as the current situation is concerned. Correct. Next question uh, is again from a, a co-working operator from Pune. Today's scenario, a lot of freelancers are leaving the space. What should be the marketing strategy to acquire new clients and hold current clients? So, yeah. Akshata, go ahead. Yeah. So, uh, see, can you hear me? Yes. It's not the right uh, business model. Uh, uh, I think uh, we this, this this scenario has come up now, and if you have the right business model, we know how to survive this. So uh, the the freelancers, yes, will move uh, out of the uh, co-working spaces for a temporary period of time, but uh, we don't know the, the you know the gravity of the of the of this pandemic as of now, and what's the length of the pandemic. But yes, uh, once it is over. After a, a temporary phase of slowdown, it will again catch up. People will start coming back uh, to us. All right. The next question is, uh, given current scenario, do you think globalization will be curtailed? And what will be the impact of, on the co-working companies on it? I think it's a very macro statement to say that global, globalization will be curtailed. Uh, I mean, the impact on a co-working space will be similar to what it, it would be on any other business for now. Uh, what we have discussed about is, I think the result eventually in the next, let's say post a quarter of uh, the lockdown is over, the result is going to be more positive for the co-working players vis-a-vis -vis any, any negative impact. And that's what we expect it to happen. So, Karan, uh, I would like to share some facts here. So, uh, for example, the BCP offices where the countries from the European uh, uh, companies and the US companies were planning, now they are uh, thinking to plan in a very big way from Vietnam and Philippines and other Chinese countries, they want to plan everything in India just for the reason because India has taken a very major step at the initial beginning of the of the scenario when it occurred. All the flights and everything was banned in the initial phase of March only coming right. from China and Southeast Asia. So they, they are seeing that Indian economy and proactive decision by the government is helping India to protect everything in a very nice manner and a very productive manner. So their businesses will not be hurt in such a way where it got hurt in other uh, countries and economies in Asia. So uh, what I see as a trend is that 
after this all settles down the companies will have a very practical approach towards india where they are thinking that the leader of the country is so active in the terms of uh, the decision making then the then the bcp offices and other outsourcing will pour in, in india on a very very large format that's why i'm saying just hold on for 5 6 months and then the clarity and everything will be a v shape recovery to right. india particularly uh, i'm seeing, i'm want, seeing a trend in some questions sorry i just want to uh, just, just uh, wanted to I'm add the, uh, yeah sure go ahead go ahead it's go a good question uh, i i would just like to you know second what uh, ankit has mentioned the kind of character our country has shown is also a confidence building exercise globally uh, so i see shift of sectors uh, especially the back offices back to india in a big big way the character has demonstrated ability got it. so uh, I, i was just noticing all the questions so two trends emerging from the questions uh, most of the uh, questions are pertaining towards one uh, are you uh, what is the advice uh, should we still invoice our existing clients in this current scenario uh one view on that and number two any specific measures on hygiene and uh, sanitization uh so the the i mean the audience wants to get some views on that so uh see with respect to the first question uh, around on invoicing because it involve uh, because if you have to reverse it later and also it's everyone's you know individual call i would uh, suggest and the way uh, we are doing is uh, we are having a chat with uh, our uh, Uh, particular clients, it's on a case by case basis, and then you know using invoices. For otherwise, for a lot of our customers, it's a, a kind of a, a business as usual uh, where we are using invoices. Uh, our commitment to every customer is that any kind of waiver which we get from our respective landlord, uh, any kind of you know uh, savings which we are doing in terms of our uh, operating cost towards electricity and all. will directly be transferred to the uh, to that client within a period of you know 2 to 3 weeks uh, once the lockdown is uh, over so that's what uh, we are you know uh, committing to our customer and um, so the good part here is uh, i mean we are trying to um, maintain a kind of a fine balance between the landlords and the customers uh, right now we can't uh, keep going to landlords and expect a major kind of a you know a wave from them post lockdown period as well Um, uh so we are trying to maintain a kind of a balance with them we are offering them lot of structures of uh, profit share or revenue share kind of arrangements with us so that it's we keep making certain level of payments to them similarly with respect to the customers uh, there is going to be a, a kind of transfer of uh, you know uh, waivers which we receive so uh, my answer to a uh, couple of uh, uh, the folks who are asking for invoicing go ahead Uh, on a case by case basis uh, if you think the clients may not be able to do then you can take a different kind of call around second on a hygiene measure uh, i would strongly urge and request everyone uh, this is not the time to uh, bring operational optimization and operational cost cutting probably uh, over the next uh, 90 day to you know uh, 180 day period uh, we should all be ready that our operating cost especially towards housekeeping and housekeeping consumables will be higher by almost about 40 to 60% but that's what the need of the r is uh, please be aware that if there is any kind of unforeseen uh, eventuality in your center then it would be a major kind of a uh, impact on uh, on uh, you uh, from a humanitarian perspective and then on your brand as well so it's very important that you uh, segregate uh, uh, and you know buffer out Uh, uh some kind of you know additional uh, operating kind of a costs uh, almost every facility management company uh, has come out with a plan with respect to the number uh, the kind of sanitization measures which we can provide and uh, we could uh, you know uh, follow those uh, kind of measures all right uh, uh paras uh, thanks for organizing this uh, webinar uh, i see a lot of interest from the audience i think there are questions just mounting up i think 97 questions uh, on this and i'm not sure how many from uh, the facebook live so any views on how you want to tackle the responses uh, should we so uh, since since we are running out of time it would be right. very difficult to take all the questions uh, i uh, since you uh, you know express your gratitude to us i mean ex- i want to express gratitude towards you karan it's been a, a great session and uh, wonderful questions you have asked so i think we have to uh call it a you know session here because it's uh, already uh, you know past 1 o'clock uh, so i just leave it to you now for the closing remarks and what we'll do is we have the depository of the question my colleague is going to work on that and uh, we'll take it offline where we feel that you know uh, we need some itself or some ease or issues i mean we'll 
uh, request you guys to take up this question and get back to us and we'll get back to them right Got it. just on the technical side i'm just trying to understand if you look at this q and a is it possible for us to answer take up some of the questions and answers ourselves Yes. yes. Okay. Cool. Awesome. So can Great. I so just yes. wanted to request one uh, simple statement to end this session on a positive note. So I have written something. So turn your panic into prayer, turn your worry into worship, and turn your fear into faith, and we'll all come great. <laughs> Ankit, I just want to say that Javed Akhtar is uh, really <laughs> needs to watch this. <laughs> Very well said, Akhtar. Thank you. Thank you. So I think just to just summarize in uh, less uh, less than one minute, uh, I think. the the overall feel is that uh, yes this is a temporary phase uh, uh, for about 3 to 6 months uh, the for the all the panelists believe that uh, the confidence will come back uh, uh, the fundamentals are strong uh, co-working actually will be one of the first sectors which will uh, emerge uh, given corporates uh, especially the large occupiers will look at uh, right sizing the office space requirements or the current portfolio which they have and uh, will uh, lend or tend towards uh, using more co-working operators uh, to uh strategically manage the cost as well as their uh, portfolio and uh, i'll just take a cue from ankit uh, for this uh, statement so i just want to end with one uh, quote again quoting martin luther king is disappointment darkness are finite but light and hope are infinite so with that uh, i'd like to just so nice yeah so nice great thank Thanks you all thank guys. you all thank you everybody thank, thank you so much thank you guys thank you guys thank you thank you thank you, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you all Thank you, Sumit. Thank you, Samir. Thank you, Paras. Thanks. Thank, Thank you, Karan. Thank you, everyone. Thanks. Thank you, Vishnu. Thanks. Bye bye. Thank you.